The Fearless Flights of Hazel Ying Li by Julie Leung, illustrated by Julie Kwan. Hazel Ying Li was born fearless. She was not afraid of wind or water, as the old Cantonese saying goes. Little Hazel was always the first to jump into the swimming pool. She would hit the ball the hardest in handball games. Hazel didn't care if she was not allowed in certain parts of town or that she had to carry identification on her at all times. She would run foot races against her brothers, pushing her legs to go their fastest. And when Hazel ran out of breath, she would fall back onto a soft patch of grass and turn her face toward the sky. Sometimes on sunny days, a silver plane would streak across the clouds. She wondered what it might be like to move so fast her feet couldn't touch the ground. It came as no surprise then that the moment she took her first airplane ride, Hazel Ying Li knew where she belonged. She delighted in the way the plane rumbled down the runway, building speed as the engine roared in her ears. The wheels lifted and the wind buoyed the metal wings up. Hazel looked out the window in wonder. When the plane landed back on the runway like a skipping rock, Hazel stepped out with only the horizon in her eyes. I will be a pilot, Hazel declared to anyone who would listen. But it's just not ladylike, her mama warned. It was 1932, and less than 1% of pilots were women. But Hazel cared about that least of all. She wanted to do something that no other Chinese-American girl had done. Her mother threw her hands up in the air. Ah, yeah, you're not afraid of anything. Once Hazel had a taste of sky, she couldn't let it go. To pay for flying lessons, Hazel worked as an elevator operator at a department store. It was one of the few jobs Chinese girls were allowed to have. Invisible jobs, Hazel called them. Jobs where you were ignored. Every day in an airless box, she shuttled shoppers from one floor to the next. When she pulled the lever for different floors, she smiled, imagining she was moving a plane's throttle instead. After work, Hazel chased every chance to get into the pilot's seat, where she learned to loop the loops, roll like a barrel, and spin in spirals. In under a year, she earned her flying license. But what could she do with it? Americans didn't want to hire the Chinese. And who would hire a Chinese girl pilot? Then in 1941, World War II reached American shores with the bombing of Pearl Harbor. All available male pilots were called to fight overseas. The U.S. military developed a new program to train women to fly in the home front. The Women Air Force Service Pilots, also known as the WASPs. Hazel knew this was her chance to become a pilot at last. She signed up right away, becoming the first Chinese-American woman to fly for the U.S. military. Though they were not allowed to fight on the front lines, wasp work could be just as dangerous. Hazel and her fellow wasps tested planes straight off the assembly line. They were the first to fly them before any man did, and often the first to discover manufacturing defects. One day in the middle of a mission, Hazel's engine cut out mid-flight. The plane shuddered and began to fall. She relied on her training, crash landing in a Kansas field. A farmer nearby mistook her for a Japanese fighter and chased her, ready to fight. Hazel ducked under the wing for safety and shouted that she was an American. She was finally able to convince the farmer. Well, you sure made a pretty landing, he said begrudgingly. Hazel told this story to her fellow pilots to make them laugh. But her own laughter masked a secret heartache. She wondered, even despite her fearlessness, if she would ever be seen as an American in other people's eyes. When she was in the air, however, none of it mattered. Hazel Ying Li was one of the few women, even among the wasps, qualified to fly pursuit planes, high-powered, single-engine fighter jets. As Hazel zoomed across the sky at hundreds of miles per hour, America became a patchwork of colors. Blue mountains melted into green hills and golden plains. Silver rivers split into gray creeks. No one could see her eyes, hair, or skin color when Hazel was thousands of feet above. Up here, people were just tiny specks against a vast land. And inside her cockpit, Hazel felt like a dragon chasing down the sun. 
She leaned into the wind, pushing her plane to go faster. She looked at the horizon and willed the world to move forward. One afternoon in November 1944, Hazel was helping fly new P-63 planes to Great Falls, Montana. There was a miscommunication from the radio tower, and Hazel's plane collided with another. She died of her injuries two days later. Her family and fellow pilots mourned her passing. They wanted to honor a life that was brief, but bold, brave, and bright. Because wasps were considered civilians at the time, Hazel was not given military recognition. The cemetery tried to stop Hazel's family from burying her in the spot they wanted. They did not want to bury Chinese in a whites-only cemetery. Not even heroes. But Hazel's family believed in Feng Shui, the Chinese philosophy that one must be in harmony with one's surroundings. Translated, Feng means wind, Shui means water. Hazel had never been afraid of either, as the Cantonese saying goes, and Hazel deserves so much better than barriers and boundaries. The family fought the cemetery's rules and wrote a letter to President Franklin Roosevelt in protest. They willed the world to move forward for Hazel, and won. Today, Hazel Ying Lee is remembered in a place chosen just for her on a hillside overlooking gentle river waters where the wind blows gently down a slope and beckons you to chase the sky. Author's Note Hazel Ying Lee was born August 24, 1912 in Portland, Oregon, during an era of rampant discrimination and racial bias against Chinese people living in the United States. One of eight siblings, it was clear from an early age that Hazel would not let the prejudices of her time stop her from what she wanted to achieve. Hazel loved to run races against her brothers, play handball, and swim. At age 19, Hazel took her first flight with a friend during an air show. From that moment on, Hazel fell in love with flying. She immediately joined the Chinese Flying Club of Portland, one of only two women to do so. She worked as an elevator operator in a, in a department store to help pay for her flying lessons. She logged as many hours in the sky as she could, earning her pilot's license within a year. In 1941, World War II reached U.S. shores with the bombing of Pearl Harbor. All able-bodied male pilots were drafted to the front lines. However, the Air Force still needed more pilots. In 1943, the government established the Women Air Force Service Pilots, WASPs, to train female pilots in order to free up male pilots for combat. Hazel saw her chance to make a difference in the war effort, doing what she loved to do most, fly. Out of the 25,000 women who applied and the 1,879 who were accepted into the program, Hazel was one of 1,074 who completed the training to become full-fledged WASPs. As much as it was exciting and liberating, the life of a wasp was, a, was also grueling and dangerous. These women tested aircraft right off the assembly lines and ferried the planes all over the country to be shipped overseas. The pilots often worked seven days a week, and though they made important contributions to the war effort, they were not offered military status nor military benefits. Despite these conditions, fellow wasps fondly remember Hazel as the life of the party, one who loved practice jokes, and seeking out the best Chinese restaurants whenever they had layovers. Hazel was also one of 132 women capable of flying pursuit, meaning she was qualified to pilot super-fast and powerful fighter planes, such as P-63 King Cobras. On Thanksgiving Day in 1944, Hazel and her fellow pilots were scheduled to land a number of these planes in Great Falls, Montana. A miscommunication from the radio tower caused Hazel and another pilot to land to try to land at the same time. The planes collided, and Hazel died from her injuries two days later, at the age of 32. Three days later, news arrived from France that her brother Victor had also died in combat. Her family had to fight to bury Hazel and Victor in the plot of their choice, after being told they were not permitted to be buried in a whites-only cemetery. The family eventually prevailed by writing a letter of protest to P President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Hazel was the last wasp to die in service for her country during World War II. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter finally gave the wasps veteran status. In, and in 2009, President 
Barack Obama awarded all WASPs the Congressional Gold Medal in recognition of their service. The women Air Force service pilots courageously answered their country's call in a time of need while blazing a trail for the brave women who have, who have given and continue to give so much in service to this nation since, he said during the ceremony. I first found out about Hazel Ying Lee while visiting the Museum of Chinese in America in New York City. As part of the main exhibit, there were stands, there stands a wall covered with portraits of notable Chinese Americans. I often like to browse through their faces and wonder at all the little known histories that were not taught to me as a kid. Hazel's portrait in particular stood out to me. There was something fearless and determined in her eyes, an expression I couldn't forget. As I learned more about her story, I marveled at Hazel's bravery and passion to pursue the skies, regardless of the gender and racial barriers she faced. I saw a woman who deserved a place in the storybooks. She didn't care if it was ladylike or not, her sister Frances Tong has said in interviews about Hazel's love of flying. She enjoyed the danger in doing something that was new to Chinese girls. <laughs>